Today has been called aptly the moment of movements. And there are new forms of solidarity and leadership across geographies, across issues, across sectors that we're seeing in the work that we support. Through innovative research, creation of knowledge products and, and content, amplifying the evidence, we're making the local global. The challenge now is to continue to be relevant, resourced and engaged. We're seeing groups that are bridging environmental justice and land rights, for example. Groups that are looking at reproductive rights issues and workers' rights issues. Groups that are linking up domestic workers' rights and migrant workers' rights. And so there's some interesting new forms of activism. And so Audre Lorde said we can't have single issue movements because we don't live single issue lives. And I truly believe that is um, at the heart of what black women were thinking when they came together in 1994 to really birth this new term, then becoming frame, now becoming movement known as reproductive justice. I was really pleased about the degree to which intersectionality was informing the conversation and the thinking about how to bring audiences into social movements from diverse corners and making sure that movements were founded in inclusion. We're also seeing more of a continuing across online spaces and offline spaces. So we know about hashtag Me Too and hashtag Never Again. And hashtag Ni Una Menos is also a movement that's linked to gender-based violence in Latin America. What's interesting about these movements is that they're broad-based. They're not just about issues, they're about collective approaches. They're led by women and they're led by women who have historically been marginalized. So since 2014, when the, uh, when the um, revolution of dignity happened in Ukraine, so the social movement, social activism has increased in Ukraine, and um, people came on the streets to say that they want to live in, the another, in, in better uh, country. Now we have um, a real active um, women's organizations, and the number is about 300. What are the things about opposition movements that matter for autonomous feminist movements? And as Layla said, one of the key findings that Laurel and Mala found is that the fact that a feminist movement is autonomous is a critical piece of its efficacy. What inspired me most about this panel was the optimism that we heard from these women activists who, in light of everything that is happening, are using that as a platform to redouble their strength and double down on their activism. I love the sense of global solidarity that, that emanated from the session today, because I think that's the only way we can tackle these issues. This is really hard work. There's no right answer. Social change is not linear. It's not deductive. It's really, um, you know, one step forward, two steps back, like we're experiencing here in the U.S., and we have to be adaptive and flexible and responsive. It's very much about understanding how do people engage with each other, what is the problem definition, is there a shared understanding of the problem and the strategy and the tactic? The power of, of grassroots organizing is essential, right? You can't move movements without organizing. This is real sustainable work. This isn't going to come and go uh, as things change. This is that when you build movements, you build the capacity of people. What resources are required to be able for us to see a significant shift in the work that we're doing and are we asking for what we need? Because one of the biggest challenges that we see also is that women's organizations tend not to ask for what we need, we under ask. I love the question and the answer to um, are we asking too little? And I think we are. It, it became really evident that we haven't seen a women's movement fully funded yet. We haven't seen a women's movement funded at capacity. At the Global Fund for Women, we are part of a movement of progressive donors that believe in the power of resourcing adequately the feminist movement globally. And if ever uh, there was uh, a statement made by someone who I think embodies the, the point of what uh, we are all about, whether we're funding in the United States or outside of the United States, it was the statement that someone should give me a lot of money because I would change the world. <laughs> 
because that's the point. The knowledge is there. Uh, that women uh, know what women need. I'm excited for us to be at capacity in a way that gives us the ability as a movement to do what I know that we've been called to do.